What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on this Coleman mini bike. It's got a few little issues going on, making the bike take off as soon as you pull the starter and get it, get the engine running. So I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to get that resolved. So let's get right into it. So here we've got, so the customer came in, brought it in. There's a few, a few issues with it. It's brand new. He rode it around the block once or twice, has a few issues with it. Uh, resolved some of them. The engine was just cocked. Um, so the chain was rubbing, wasn't aligned right, was rubbing the chain guard, a few things like that. Second issue is the engine or the, the bike takes off as soon as you start it. So you start it, takes off, uh, which is really unsafe, um, but they sent him in a, a new clutch. I change clutches on this all the time. The clutches that they put on them seize up um, or get dirty and they just don't clean them. So they just replace them. So they sent him a new clutch, um, which I'll show you about in a minute, but um, it's still doing it. So you start up the bike, bike takes off, and can't figure out why. So he brought it in and I'll show you what it's doing. So let's start it up. You can kind of see it on this side. So look at this back tire. Um, it does it on the ground, but I've got it up on my jack, obviously. It's a little less resistance, obviously, but same idea if it were on the ground, so. So as you can see, as soon as you start it up, it takes a second, but then that clutch just is engaged and the wheel takes off. Uh, it's not safe. This, you know, we're a little kid or something. He's sitting on it, it takes off from under him. If it doesn't have the brake on, if he's standing next to him, um, it's just lots of problems with it. A lot of people, their first inclination is the clutch. Let's take the clutch off. Let's clean it. Let's grease the shaft. Um, Let's focus on the clutch. The clutch is binding. Yeah, the clutch is a great place to look. That's not the problem here. Um, brand new clutch. Yes, you could have a bad brand new clutch, but this is a brand new clutch and I know that's not the problem here. The, the shaft is greased, the clutch is not binding. Guarantee it. The problem here and what I'm making this video to show you is the idle adjustment. It's running too fast. This bike is running too fast, which is causing the centrifugal clutch to be engaged. So yes, the clutch is engaged, but it's because it's idling too high. How do you fix that, you ask? Well, you can't fix that on the carburetor. So here's a carburetor that comes on these Coleman machines. There's your idle adjustment, typically. What are you supposed to do with that? It is a flat nut that you can't screw in or out. It's a non-adjustable carburetor. You can't adjust them on the carburetor. If the carburetor were the issue, you could replace the carburetor. I have had issues where the carb is bad and we do need to replace the carburetor. You know, the jets are bad. They're not, you know, they're, they're cheap carburetors. Jets are bad, putting in too much fuel, whatever. Just need to replace the carburetor. That could be the, the case. But this isn't the problem on this one either. The problem, I'm, the point I'm getting at is we're looking at the, um, the governor spring. Let me get you in real close. So what we're dealing, excuse me. I, did, I think I said the governor spring. We're talking about the throttle return spring. So it's on the throttle linkage. Let me see if I can get you a better picture. Right here. If it will focus. You get the idea though what we're talking about. It's the throttle return spring. There's too much tension on it. 
pulling it there's too much tension on it pulling it um, open Prove my point. I'm going to show you the RPM. These should idle at 1700 RPMs plus or minus 150 RPMs. So nothing has changed since I first showed you what we were doing. So let's start it up again. That's idling. It's supposed to be idling at 24.50. Okay, so there's your idle, 24.50. I don't think that's within 150 RPMs of 1700. I never passed my math class, but I'm pretty sure. Okay. So now we're going to make a drastic change. I'm not going to do anything other than remove the thr throttle return spring. Oops. Okay. So see that right here? All we're doing is re removing it. You think the uh, clutch is, is seized? Seized on there or seized? If it was seized altogether, it would rotate at any speed because it would be seized, you know, it would be seized in rotation. Okay, so now let's start it again. The throttle return spring is not on the throttle. And we'll check the idle as well, the RPMs. Fourteen ninety, fifteen hundred. Sixteen. I think I pushed the wrong button. Reset it. We're at 1600, so we're within 150 of the 1700 mark. It's fluctuating quite a bit, but there you go. Clutch isn't moving. So could we leave the throttle return spring off? Sure we could. The kids are riding this, we want it to be as safe as we can. We want it to be able to snap back. So how are we gonna fix this? What, are, what's the reason? what is the purpose of this video? How do we resolve this issue? Well, we stretch this little spring. We're gonna stretch it out a little bit, just a hair. Let's do it.
Think that's good? Guess we'll find out. Let's give it a whirl. So there's still tension on it. The spring up here is helping with that snapback as well, so. Let's put it on and see if that solves our problem. All right, let's give it a whirl. Still a little high, I can tell already. Yeah, we're at 1900. Sounds better. Seventeen thirty on the money. Seventeen fifty. It's sitting right at seventeen fifty. Tires, I mean, you can kind of see the tires like starting to wheel forward. That's just the vibration. As soon as it's on the ground, it's not going to move. Oh, you know what? I didn't even attach the spring. Did you notice that? Either that or it came loose. You're probably thinking, geez. Duh. I was thinking it was perfect, but the spring wasn't even attached. I bet when I uh, went to restretch it, it popped off. Unless I just didn't attach it. What do you guys think? You guys are just probably screaming in the video. Duh. Yeah, I bet when I stretched it, it didn't. Pop back off. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Leave a thumbs up for me if you'd like. If you have any questions about it, throw them in the comments down below. Let's try that again.
turn the gas on. up in there. I don't know if you could see that in the video. I was wondering why it wasn't getting adjusted at all. Still connected. Seventeen fifty. There you go. That is how you adjust the idle. Oh, shouldn't put your hand on the muffler after it's been running. But that is how you adjust the idle on a Coleman mini bike, any mini bike probably really, I'm sure they're all going to these non-adjustable carbs now, but that's how you adjust the idle speed of a small engine, we'll say, with a non-adjustable carb. If your clutch, check your clutch. A lot of, you know, these, these clutches are notorious for seizing up or, or getting bound up, so check the clutch. But if it sounds like your engine is, is idling high, it's a brand new bike, even if it's an old bike and it's idling high. That's the way to adjust the idle without going through the, the havoc of replacing the carburetor or, or anything like that. That's an easy way to adjust the idle speed. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If you have any comments, leave them down below. And as always, make a choice to have a great day. Thank you all for watching.